we will continue with the topic so next topic that we will be seeing it is peritonitis so what is this peritonitis so peritonitis it is also known as acute abdomen okay peritonitis it is also known as acute abdomen so this peritonitis it is localized or generalized inflammatory process of the peritoneum okay so peritonitis it is usually a localized or generalized inflammatory process of the peritoneum so peritonitis it is also known as acute abdomen okay peritonitis it is also known as acute abdomen so peritonitis it is usually a localized or generalized inflammatory process of the peritoneum okay? it is localized or generalized inflammatory process of the peritone peritoneum so peritone peritonitis it is an inflammation of the lining of the abdominal cavity okay so peritonitis it is usually inflammation of the lining of the abdominal cavity that is known as peritoneum okay lining of the abdominal cavity that is usually known as peritoneum so it is usually so peritonitis it is also known as acute abdomen so peritonitis is a localized or generalized inflammatory process of the peritoneum so peritonitis it is the inflammation inflammation of the lining of the abdominal cavity that is peritoneum so the causes of this uh, the next is types of peritonitis so there are mainly two types of peritonitis primary peritonitis and secondary peritonitis so when we talk about this primary peritonitis so primary peritonitis it is usually when there is infection in the blood or lymph okay when there is infection in the blood or lymph this causes infection in the peritoneum so peri peri primary peritonitis it is usually when there is infection in the blood or lymph okay when there is infect inflammation in the so when the when there is infection in the blood or lymph this causes infection in the peritoneum so this is very rare rare type where it is not usually it is not usually occurring so next is per secondary peritonitis so secondary peritonitis occurs when the bacteria or uh, form in the biliary or gastrointestinal tract okay when the bacteria form in the biliary or gi tract and then it gets into the peritoneum and causes peritonitis okay it usually gets into the peritoneum and causes peritonitis so that is usually seen is that there are mainly two types of peritonitis one is primary peritonitis the next is secondary peritonitis so primary peritonitis it is usually where the infection is present in the blood or lymph and it causes infection to the peritoneum and next secondary peritonitis where bacteria will be present in the biliary or gi tract and then it causes infection in the peritoneum so this is about this types of peritonitis so what is peritonitis it is also called as acute abdomen so this is usually a inflammatory process of the peritoneum peritonitis it is usually where it occurs like it usually occurs when there is uh, it causes inflammation in the uh, lining of the abdominal cavity that is peritoneum so there are mainly two types primary peritonitis and secondary peritonitis so next is causes so the causes for this peritonitis it might be like there are different causes like if there is abscess in the intra abdominal abscess okay if there is intra abdominal abscess or if there is peritoneal paralysis okay if there is peritoneal paralysis and then it might be due to ruptured appendix okay it can be due to ruptured appendix it can be due to peptic ulcer diverticulitis so that is usually there are called many causes like if there is intra abdominal abscess peritoneal dialysis a uh, ruptured appendix peptic ulcer diverticulitis any injury or trauma or if there is cirrhosis of liver or if the person is suffering from cirrhosis of liver then there is chances that they might develop peritonitis if there is ascites pancreatitis okay so if there is history of pelvic inflammatory disease or if there is infection in the or if it is usually infection following abdominal surgery okay infection following abdominal surgery so these are due to the causes of uh, causes of peritonitis it mainly includes like if there is intra abdominal abscess okay if there is intra abdominal abscess uh, then diverticulitis peptic ulcer uh, ruptured appendix any injury or trauma ascites peritonitis or pelvic inflammatory disease infection following the abdominal surgery or if there is person is suffering from cirrhosis of liver okay so these are usually the causes of this peritonitis so next is symptoms so symptoms it mainly includes like if there is abdominal there will be abdominal pain fever chills breathing difficulty nausea and vomiting uh, nausea, uh, breathing difficulty nausea and vomiting fluid in the abdomen okay there will be fluid in the abdomen inability to pass stool or gas or low urine output okay low urine output excessive fatigue electrolyte imbalance loss of appetite and so you should usually usually these are usually the symptoms that is usually seen in case of peritonitis so what is that abdominal pain or abdominal pain abdominal tenderness and then there will be breathing difficulty shock low blood pressure level okay low blood pressure will nausea vomiting low 
then low urine output and then inability to pass stools or stool or gas fever and chills loss of appetite a loss of appetite appetite fluid in the abdomen okay these are usually the symptoms of this peritonitis so next is diagnostic evaluation so diagnostic evaluation they go with history collection physical examination blood test x ray of the abdomen ct of the ct scan of the abdomen and then fluid uh, then usually peritoneal fluid culture will be done laparoscopy will be done rectal or pelvic examination okay so this is usually the diagnostic test that is usually done so mainly they go with blood test uh, physical examination history collection peritoneal fluid culture x ray abdominal ct scan and then rectal and pelvic exam okay this is usually about this diagnostic test that is usually they do in case of peritonitis and next is management so when we talk about this management so mainly it includes like pharmacological therapy like giving antibiotics to them or surgical management will be done so when we go with like pharmacological therapy that is mainly they go with antibiotic therapy okay they go with antibiotic therapy so like they'll be administering cefo 16 and um, aminoglycoside okay they'll be given cefo 16 aminoglycoside our penicillin g will be administered okay or penicillin g will be administered so antibiotic therapy they go with cefo 16 with uh, aminoglycoside or penicillin g will be given other than that they also give like clindamycin will be given with aminoglycoside okay they will be given clindamycin with aminoglycoside so that is treatment usually they go with antibiotic therapy and uh, surgical management so antibiotic therapy they start with like cefo 16 will be given with am aminoglycoside or penicillin g and clindamycin will be given along with aminoglycoside so that is usually this antibiotics usually they give depending upon the infective organisms okay depending upon the infective organism so that is usually about this thing and then in case of uh, if the case is associated with peritoneal dialysis okay if the case is associated with peritoneal dialysis antibiotics will be infused with through this dialysis catheter okay so if in case of peritoneal dialysis this antibiotics will be infused in the dialysis catheter and it will this treatment this antibiotic treatment whatever we are given it should be given for at least 1 to 2 weeks okay they will be giving for 1 to 2 weeks okay in case of peritoneal dialysis they go with giving this antibiotics they infuse it into the diffusing catheter and the infection is severe okay if the infection is severe the catheter must be changed oftenly okay the catheter must be changed oftenly so that is usually about this Thing. and then in case of if they are having pain they go with giving them analgesics to reduce the pain and in case of this is about this antibiotic therapy that is usually given so in case of antibiotic therapy they start with giving them uh, cefo 16 with uh, aminoglycoside or penicillin g and clindamycin with aminoglycoside and this is treatment should be given for 1 to 2 weeks okay it should be given for 1 to 2 weeks and in case of peritoneal dialysis they go with infusing antibiotics in the peritoneal catheter okay they go with infusing antibiotics in the peritoneal catheter okay they go with infusing in anti uh, peritoneal catheter and the infection is severe then they go with uh, they have to ch change the catheter remove the catheter oftenly okay they have to remove the catheter oftenly so that is usually there and next is that analgesics will be given in case of to reduce the pain so that is usually about this thing then they go with surgical management surgical management they go with laparotomy okay surgical management they go with laparotomy so this is usually to this is done mainly to remove the infected tissues okay this is done mainly to remove the infective tissues so that the infection can be reduced okay so this is done mainly to remove the infective tissues so that infection can be reduced so this is usually about this and other than the general measures can be done like uh, rehydration should be maintained that is rehydration should be removed like fluid replacement can be done uh, so in vigorous intravenous re uh, rehydration should be done okay vigorous intravenous rehydration should be done so that is usually a tube will be inserted in through the nose okay a tube will be inserted into the nose that will be entering into the stomach or intestine to drain the fluid or gas okay that is uh, that is intravenous rehydration or intravenous rehydration should be done that is to correct the electrolyte balance that is fluid should be removed okay excessive fluid should be removed so therefore a tube will be inserted from the nose to the stomach or to the intestine then they will drain up the fluid okay they drain drain up the fluid so this is usually known as general supportive measures that is usually done so this is about this management of peritonitis so what is the management of peritonitis it is mainly where they go with uh, like treatment will be through surgical management and antibiotic therapy so in case of this antibiotic therapy they go with few antibiotics will be given to re reduce to depending upon the 
organism so depending upon the organism they'll just give them antibiotics whichever the antibiotics that has to be given and it should be given for one to two weeks surgical management they go with laparotomy where the uh, damn infected tissues will be removed so that infection can be reduced along with that supportive measures will be done where a tube will be inserted from the nose to stomach or intestine to drain up the excessive fluid so this is about this peritonitis so that is mainly peritonitis it is where there will be inflammation of the lining of the abdominal cavity that is peritoneum